This is lesson 48 of Hunger and Thirst for Righteousness. It's called Love Reveals. And so this is going to be a lesson about um, kind of when Solomon shows like his greatest wisdom, like his greatest wisdom in all of Israel is like in all, like, oh my God, Solomon is so wise. And so we're going to get into this story, um, look into the wisdom he used to administer justice and also how we should also use this type of wisdom to administer justice in our lives. And so it reads, we're in 1 Kings 3. Then two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. The one woman said, oh, my Lord, this woman and I lived in the same house and I gave birth to a child while she was in the house. It happened on the third day after I gave birth that this woman also gave birth to a child and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house and, the, and only the two of us in the house. This woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from beside me while your maid servant slept and lay him in her bosom and laid her dead son in my bosom. When I rose in the morning to nurse my son, behold, he was dead. When I looked at him carefully in the morning, behold, he was not my son whom I had born. Then the other woman said, no, for the living one is my son and the dead one is your son. But the first woman said, no, for the dead one is your son, the living one, the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. Then the king said, the one, the one says, this is my son who was living, and your son is the dead one. And the other says, no, your, for your son is the dead one, and my son is the living one. The king said, get me a sword. So they, so they brought a sword before the king. The king said, divide the living child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. Then the woman whose child was the living one spoke to the king, for she was deeply stirred over her son and said, Oh, my Lord, give her the living child and by no means kill him. But the other said, He shall, he shall be neither mine nor yours. Divide him. And the king said, Give the first woman the living child. By no means kill him. She is his mother. When all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had handed down, they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. Okay. So, I really um, love this. Um, I really love this story. It's like one of the stories, honestly, in my life. Um, I think that has given me a lot of wisdom about how to handle situations that you may not see very clearly who is in the right. You, I can't really see clearly who's in the right. And there is a point about this where one he uses the command of love to see. Why do I say this? Because when it comes to killing the child, was Solomon actually going to kill the child? No. He was looking for a reaction of who actually loves the child. Who actually loves the child? Is it obviously a mother is not going to want to see their, their child split in two and killed? A mother's not one to see their, their child split in two and killed. And so he used the command of love, knowing that, okay, the person who is loving is in the right. Because <laughs> that's what we fail to realize is the person that is choosing love is the one who's actually right. The one that's actually right. And so it wasn't a woman that says, no, well, okay, you can have a child, I can have a child, the child's dead, they don't even care about the child. It's the one that actually cared about the child that Solomon knew this is your mother because she, she loves you. Because she loves you. And we're going to get into this because in our journeys, we need to have this type of wisdom to judge to judge in scenarios like this and not even just it's not about children like that we live in a day and age obviously where we can very clearly see who's whose child this is and you know there's a lot of ways that people do these things right but it's deeper than that because you're going to have situations where it's two people in front of you and they're pitted against each other one of them is right and one of them is wrong one of them is being light and one of them is being darkness. One of them is being righteous. One of them is being wicked. 
some one of them is right and one of them is wrong or else there will be no strife. And we've got to ask God to give us the wisdom to administer justice, to see clearly who is right and who is wrong. A couple verses about this. Ephesians 5.13 says, But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. And so we know that it is the light that makes things visible for you to be able to see spiritually. If you want to see, it needs to be exposed by light. Correct? Let's keep going. John 1, 8 to 10 says, there was no, he was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light, which coming to the world enlightens every man. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. So in this passage, we know this is a reference to Jesus. We know that Jesus is being called the true light. He is the light, correct? John 1, 14, the word became flesh. We know the word is Jesus. The word became flesh is Jesus and built among us. And we saw his glory. Glory is the only begotten from the father, full of grace and truth. So this word, well, Jesus, who is light, who is also the word, right? It says that he was filled with two things, grace and truth. Grace and truth. Grace and truth. If I could give you an even junior version of this verse, the NLT version would say to you, full of unfailing love and faith, faith and love. Grace is love. Truth is faith. These are the two components of light. The two components of the word, the two components of Jesus. This is who he is. He is grace and truth. He is love and faith. That's who he is. That's who he is. It says the words are lent to my feet and a light to my path. So once again, we we bridged the gap where we just talked about how he said that Jesus is the light, said that Jesus is the word. Well, Psalms let us know very clearly the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So just like we just did it very clearly in John 1, put it together with Jesus the word, Jesus the light. We understand these all things are equal. Jesus equals light, Jesus equals, uh, equals word, right? Well, we have Psalms who says, okay, well, let me make it even more clear for you where the word is light. The word is light. The word is light. Things become evident when they come into the light. The word is light. The word is light. Now, let's keep going. He sends forth his command to the earth. His word runs very slippery, very, um, I'm sorry, very swiftly. He sends forth his command to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. Now, we are still putting together a great grand divine equation right here. We know that Jesus is a light. We also know that he equals the word. We just saw very clearly the word equals light. So we understand this is a true, true equation, true equalities right here. Now, what's also equal with the word, it says he sends forth his command to the earth. His word runs very slippery, or very swiftly. This verse is equating his command to his word. His word is his command. His word is his command. Now, I love this. This is how perfect the Bible is. We don't have to talk too much. The Bible says what it says. Psalms 19, 8, the precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. So we just talked about this, how anything that comes to the light, um, it becomes evident. We just saw very clear that his word is light. We also saw very clear that his word is his commandment. What does this, this, this verse say? The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. If you want to see clearly, hmm. It must be seen through the lens of his command. So how does Solomon see clearly in this situation? He was looking through the lens of the command of God that we should love each other. He put this, these women in a situation where the love of their hearts would be revealed. You have one woman that is uh, that, that, that doesn't even care if the woman has the baby as long as the baby's okay. 
And you have another woman that just selfishly does not want the other woman to have the baby and doesn't care if the baby die. Which one do you think is right? The one that loves is right. Now, for us in this day and age, everyone says, I love God. But we have to understand that the title is measures is what it says. Love reveals for a reason, but love reveals. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. This is a verse that if you apply to your life, you will look as wise as Solomon in administering justice. Is a lot of times we side with the person who's gossiping about people, who's condemning people, who's persecuting people, who is, uh, you know, they acting super stressed out, so they look innocent, all other stuff, whatever it is, right? And they go to church and they, and they do their times and they, they do the prayers. But the reality is none of those things are showing that you love God. If you love God, then love your brother. Go and talk to him. Go and talk to her. Genuinely love them. Not I love you, but I gossip about you behind the scenes. No, 100% of the time, love them even deep down to your thoughts. Love them. Once again, the commandment, what does it say? The commandment of the Lord is pure and lightening the eyes. This is what John is referring to. Is that the commandment of the Lord will enlighten your eyes about who is telling the truth and who is a liar. And I love this because there's a lot of different ways this goes in life, to be honest with you. You say you love God, then love your brother. I'm, that's the thing is that if you're only a fool listens to what people say, it's okay, one woman says it's her baby, the one says it's her baby. How are you going to listen to what people say? you got to have a spiritual discernment and it comes to the commandment of God. And that's why I say to you, if you want to know if someone truly loves God deep down in their heart, challenge them to love their brother. If you truly want to know if someone is an apostle of Jesus Christ, then put him over all things. Give up everything to follow him then, because that's what the true apostles have done. It says in the Bible, even about prophets, it says that, that uh, he was speaking in, in dreams and visions. But it also says that if a prophet is among you, his word will come true. Then take that very seriously. Did what they say come true? Did it come true? This is the wisdom of Solomon. It's something I really do implore us all to dive deep into the Bible and when we understand things and we know things, there is a healthy pressure that reveals the truth. And it's only through seeing through the command of the Lord that that pressure will reveal exactly if you're dealing with righteousness or wickedness or holy or unholiness or belief or unbelief. But it takes spiritual vision. It can't, it's not just about what comes out of someone's mouth. It's like what comes out of someone's mouth sets the standard. But then their walk decides if they're calling their own selves a liar or not. You say you love God. You've spoken right. But the question is, the question is, like he said, if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. We say we love, we say we like, we say we do a lot of things. But it's through actually fulfilling that will, fulfilling that command that we show that we actually love him. And so, 
This was Love Reveals Lesson 48. Very short lesson. I, I didn't think it needed to be uh, too long. Not too much to talk about there, but it was a lesson that needed to be done. Um, love Reveals, guys. If you want to know the truth, challenge someone to love. Challenge someone to love. So, Tyler Offering. MFH pulls $800 a week to ensure that God's work can and will continue through this ministry. The rest of the, uh, we will then redistribute all collective funds evenly back out to those that gave. We'll be the first to bless you. That's Cash App, Money Sign, Christ King Way, PayPal at MFH Ministry. This was Lesson 48. We'll be back with Lesson 49 soon. Have a blessed day.